I started my talk by quoting a verse of the Quran, which was also recited by the Qari in the beginning of the program, which occurs in Surah Qamar, chapter number 54, no less than four times. Surah Qamar, chapter 54, verse number 17, verse number 22, verse number 32, and verse number 40. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرَانَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِمُدَّقِرِ we have made the Quran easy for you to understand and memorize. Then which of you shall not receive admonition? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator says that we have made the Quran easy for you to understand. Then which of you shall not receive admonition? Allah says in the Quran in several places, in several verses, including Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 242. La that so that they will understand. Allah says in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 1, Alif Lam Ra, Tilka Ayatul Kitab. Wal Quran al Mubin. That Alif Lam Ra, these are the verses of the Quran that make things clear to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that this Quran, we have made it easy for you to understand. Allah says, so that they understand. Allah says, we have revealed the verse of the Quran, so that it will make things clear to you. So who will you obey? Who will you follow? Those Muslims who say that the Quran was only meant for the scholars to understand it, or should we follow the guidance of the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it was made easy for the human beings to understand. Allah at the same time, if you read the Quran, and if you don't understand certain things, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 43, and Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, Allah says, Allah says that if you do not know, ask the person who possesses the message. Ask the person who possesses the knowledge. That if you do not know anything, if you do not possess the message, ask the person who is knowledgeable. For example, if the Quran speaks about science, who will go and ask? Will you ask the cobbler? Will you ask the barber? You will ask a scientist. Because a scientist is an expert in the field of science. A scientist is an alim in the field of science. Similarly, if the Quran speaks about medicine, who will you ask? But naturally you will ask a doctor. Because a doctor is an alim, he is an expert in the field of medicine. Similarly, if you want to know something about Nuzul Quran, who will you ask? You will ask an alim who has gone to Dalar Ulum, maybe for seven years, for ten years, a person who is expert about the Nuzul Quran. So depending upon what field you want to know, you have to ask an expert in that field. So the Quran says that while reading the Quran, if you have certain problems, you can surely very well ask a person who's an expert in that field. And that reminds me of the example of Prophet Keith Moore. There were a group of Arabs who followed the advice given in the Quran in Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 43 and Surah Ambiya chapter number 21 verse number 7 which says if you don't know, ask the person who possesses the knowledge. So these group of Arabs, they collected all the material in the Quran and the Hadith which speaks about embryology and they presented it to Prophet Dr. Keith Moore who at that time in the early 80s, 1980s, he was one of the person who was the authority in the field of embryology. And he was the head of the Department of Anatomy in the University of Toronto. So they presented the translation 
of the various verses of the Quran to Prophet Keith Moore. And they asked him that what are your comments? So after going through the translation of the various verses of the Quran and the Hadith, he said that most of the information given in the Quran is in perfect conformity with modern embryology. But there are a few verses which I cannot say that they are correct. Neither can I say they are wrong because I myself do not know about it. And two such verses were the first two verses of the Quran to be revealed from Surah Ikra, Surah Alaq, chapter number 96, verse number 1 and 2, which says, Ikra bismi rabbik allazi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq. Read, recite and proclaim in the name of thy Lord who created, who created the human beings from something which clings a leech-like substance. The Arabic word alaq means something which clings. It even means a congealed clot of blood. It also means a leech-like substance. So Professor Keith Moore said, I do not know whether the embryo in the initial stages looks like a leech or not. So he went in his laboratory and under a very powerful microscope, he observed the early stages of the embryo and compared it with a photograph of a leech. And he was astonished at the striking resemblance. And later on, when about 80 questions were asked to him, he said, at that time, in the early 1980s, that if you would have asked these questions to me 30 years ago, I would not be able to answer more than 50% because embryology is a new branch of medicine which has developed. And he is the author of a very famous book. And whatever additional material he acquired from the Quran Hadith, he incorporated it in his third edition, The Developing Human Being, and he got an award for the best medical book written by a single author in that year. And when I was in a medical college in the 1980s, in the first year of medicine, in the subject of embryology, if we wanted to score high marks, we used to refer to the developing human being, the book written by Professor Dr. Keith Moore. If we wanted just passing marks, we used to refer to the book written by Dr. Inderbir Singh. You know, just pass. If you want to score high marks, then we have to read the book Developing Human Being by Professor Keith Moore. And this book, later on, was translated into several languages of the world. And Professor Keith Moore said, I have got no objection in agreeing that this Quran, it has to be the word of the Creator Almighty God. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he has to be the messenger of this God Almighty. Whenever we purchase an equipment, along with the equipment, we get an instruction manual. For example, when we purchase a DVD player, we get an instruction manual which tells us how the DVD player should be operated. If you want to play the DVD, put the disc and press the play button. If you want to skip, press the skip button. If you want to stop, press the stop button. Don't drop it from a height, it will get damaged. Don't immerse it in water, it will get spoiled. All these details are given in, given in the instruction manual. Whenever you buy an equipment, it has an instruction manual. And more, complicated the machine, the more requirement of the instruction manual 